Hey there, my name is Epi, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm here to give you all 100 more dumb facts from the recent Splatoon 3 Direct presentation. In case you need context, this is part 2 to my well-received 100 dumb facts video, and a lot of you wanted this video, so I'm here to deliver with actual good spicy facts that you may or may not know about. Without further ado, let's begin. If you look at the Splatoon 2 Direct, you could see everything similar to the Splat 3 Direct, except for one minor detail, the missing squid. We see that big pig that we saw before in the announcement trailer, and I would like to think that it's made of China. The porcelain. 2 FPS jellyfish in Splatsville. The ink is more detailed with darker shades than the ink meter. You can see the Inkling Girl's hairstyle clipping into her head. I don't know, I just thought this was a funny thing to point out. Surprisingly enough, the Direct didn't go into detail regarding the amount of eye color options there are, colored legwear, eyebrows, etc. Interesting thing that came out after the Direct is that the Tactic Cooler speeds up your respawn times, according to this tweet by Nintendo. The Reef Slider is confirmed to have invincibility as you ride the special. It goes away afterwards. The Ink Storm Cloud is thicker and actually looks more like a cloud. Everyone hates Tenta Missiles and left a disappointing sigh when they were shown on screen. Mahi Mahi Resort looks much more livelier than before. A group of sharks is called a Shiver, and a group of eels is called a Fry. Thank you YouTube comments for letting me know. Nintendo made a mistake when they added physics to lockers. Just the countless amount of possibilities. I did not know about this earlier, but the staff character species resemble goldfish according to Inkopedia. That viking helmet with glasses headgear we saw in the very first trailer is apparently all in one and not separate items. I didn't point this out in my earlier video but Toxic Mist is returning. The wave breaker resembles a toy called the Popcatcher and to be honest I thought this was a weird looking shuttlecock at first. In this shot you can see that there wasn't really a throwing animation for the Booyah Bomb and it's launched much quicker than the previous game. Another thing about this, the special doesn't cover turf unless it splats someone. Here in Ammo Knights you can see a lot of different parts like the Dynamo's golden handle, ink tanks of a heavy spot link, etc. Right before you enter the building, you can see a bunch of watches hanging on the wall, as well as a bunch of pictures, however the placements are different when you're inside. In that black and white picture, I think that's the image of the Squidbeak Splatoon, which would definitely make the most sense. There's a piece of headgear called Cephalopods, and shoes called Force Reboots. Nintendo's very punny today. The first win of the day gives you a whopping 7500 XP bonus, and while it proves my metal XP prediction wrong, I'm satisfied to see them change a few things in terms of leveling up. We got new metals shown off, Turf Inker, which is very self-explanatory, Home Base Inker, which I assume means you covered the most in front of your spawn area, and and Ink Consumer is when you've spent a lot of ink and had to refill a lot of times. This was shown in the release date trailer, but they're bringing back the death counter, which is neat. Why are these Octolings lagging at 5 frames per second here? Was it because of the boba? Look at this dude. <laughs> huh. They must be talking about this. I talked about the two new abilities coming to Splatoon 3, but we actually get to see the icon for the upcoming sub resistance up ability. I feel like Nails, Mo, and Crayman would get along well together. In Mana Wardrobe, you could see the Tri Shred T as a purchasable option, with the star and ability swap. Because the new feature they're adding into this game, Gear Star Power, which will allow you to get ability chunks faster, and you can also raise that star power by trading Super C Snails with merch. Speaking of merch, right here you can see an icon of Annie and Mo on the button that says Splatnet Delivery. It's so cool to see the classic characters return in a way. The Ink Saver main icon has been updated to better fit the main colors of Splatoon 3. You can now change both up down and left right stick controls. There are some loadouts that I missed in the previous video, so here they are. Octobrush with Suction Bomb and Zipcaster, Splattershot Pro with the Angle Marker and Crab Tank, and 96 scale with Splash Wall and Killer Will 5.1. In Clam Blitz, you no longer have to carry 10 clams in order to form a Power Clam, and instead you only need 8. And yes, the Power Clam will still give you 20 points when you score. In the Rainmaker footage, the end zap is shown to be carrying the Suction Bomb and the Tactic Cooler. You can see the special icon being replaced by the Rainmaker, not sure if that means the special itself is being replaced though. The Tri-Stringer does come with Toxic Mist and the Killer Whale 5.1. Sorry for not pointing that out earlier. I honestly thought there was something more to the lobby because of this doorway. Turns out it's just the exit. And I think I just got proven wrong because there is a whole staircase right next to the lobby terminal. And there is something on the second floor. But I guess we have to find out what it is. Maybe it's the Salmon Run practice lobby? No clue. There's a whole gumball machine thing and I'm going to assume this is for getting cards for the new mode, Table Turf Battle. At least it's not gotcha. Fun fact, the models 
controls of the lockers were actually used before in Animal Crossing New Horizons. There may be a few differences, but they look alike regardless. We return to Hotlantis, and we can see those cute life-size squid plushies in the background, which are also becoming real products. The voiceover of the Direct says the store manager vanishes quite often, and I wouldn't be surprised if they have something to do with the lore. Maybe it's a tease for the upcoming DLC? Harmony's got a cute little black and white clownfish that lives in her hair. There are a few banner images that feature Inkling and Octoling characters, but those are most likely for branding instead of just regular photos. There's a cursed Furby looking toy that you can get in a catalog, and it looks terrible. Studio headphones featured on the same catalog the Dab emote exists on, and I don't know what to be more disappointed towards. Why are there trash bags just sitting on a roof? Is there any action taken against littering? Those flowers ain't gonna make it look nicer, you know. We got multiple different specials given to us in Salmon Run. The Wavebreaker, Inkjet, Triple, Ink Strike, Crab Tank, Killer Whale 5.1, Reef Slider, and possibly a lot more. <gasps> in this shot, we can see that Captain 3, in which yes, that's what I'll be calling them from now on, has green eyes here, yet in the art, their eyes are orange. Fans have been speculating that the story mode begins with the player getting Zapfish as usual, but as you progress you'll have different objectives, probably after this specific cutscene. Speaking of which, Agent 3 loses her hand-me-down hero outfit and has a different style. Octavio's still got that lovely GoPro of his. We can see a whole group of eels flying around, which could potentially mean this happens before or after you meet Deep Cut. As I've said this earlier in the video, a group of eels mean fry. This is supposedly the finale to this whole story saga thing, which I'd assume the end to the whole Squid Beak Splatoon story and move on to something else after. There's much more area to explore in Splatsville, but of course not everything will be shown to us, and by the time this video releases, everything's been shown by now, thanks to this. I asked if the remaining amount meant that you have a limited supply of these food items, but turns out it's the amount of matches you can play with them. I can't believe I forgot about that feature. Imagine going hazard level max with someone next to you, and then they see this thing and run out of the room. I almost forgot to point out that there are multiple King Salmonids, with Kahazuna being one of them. This was confirmed by the voiceover. The addition of photo mode is nice and all, but it really lacks filters, free camera, colors, and much more. There is a set button and I don't know if this means you can change where you want your character to be or if this is related to what I just complained about one fact ago. As we're shown recon mode, the heavy splatling comes with the sprinkler and wave breaker. For those that don't know, Salmon Run is confirmed to be a permanent mode with no need to wait for a specific time to open or anything. You can save your gear via amiibo as usual, which is nice. What's not nice is how the amiibo dances up to the dab pose. The Splatshot Jr's kit is Splat Bomb and Big Bubbler. They renamed the Fringe Loafers into Baggy Sock Fringe Loafs. I didn't point this out either, but when you reach a checkpoint in Rainmaker, the Rainmaker itself will spawn from there. We're once again jumping back into deep cut territory, and wow, there's a lot I missed here. I didn't notice how Fry's mouth is in yellow and is blue instead. Shiver may or may not be genderqueer. They also got shark teeth earrings, and Fry's got those eel teeth earrings. Both of their names mean shark and moray eel in Japanese. Big Man's name comes from the fact that he's big, and he's a manta ray. Imagine putting a phone like that in your pocket, and it just causes nothing but pain, because that looks uncomfortable AF. In the Splatfest portion of the Direct, you can push over boxes. That's a fact! You can cancel your Reef Slider special midway through. On the top left side of the screen, you can see that there are two Ultra Signals that you may need to try to get for your team. As you can see, there's an Ultra Signal waiting at the center of the map, with only a minute into the match. And then here, almost three minutes past, the Ultra Signal is still waiting. Proof of what I just said two facts ago, the Ultra Signal spawns again once the Sprinkler of Doom arrives. Nintendo chose the 27th of August for the Splatfest World Premiere because it's World Rock Paper Scissors Day. There's literally a day about everything now. I suppose I should mention the Splatlands Invitational that's happening at PAX West, and that's cool. Wait, we're not at 100? I'll just say some random stuff then. This direct was 5 minutes longer than Splatoon 2's direct. It took 7 years for Hammerhead Ridge to be fully built. Splatoon 3 is the third game in one of Nintendo's most successful franchises. This specific jellyfish is running at a normal frame rate. They must have good ethernet connection. I've never mentioned the Hagglefish market was never shown until this presentation. I think they brought back Opening Gambit, but replaced the icons with the respective coffee machine spawn point. They slightly changed the splat font. Here's a comparison to prove it. Still this way in Booyah, a real disappointment. I like the name Blob Mob Flip Flops. Mr. Coco's got chest hair. Fry's baggy pants has holes in them. I will riot if Bluefin Depot doesn't make a return. Hashtag Big Man Sweep! Team Paper is going to win the Splatfest, and it's most definitely because the least amount of people care for that group, and they'll have their glory. Splatoon 3 will bring a lot of stuff on our plates, starting from September 9, 2022. Okay, now I'm actually done with everything. I most definitely missed the smallest of details possible, but I'm exhausted after 
squinting my eyes out at everything. I wasn't expecting to make another video to the direct, but man, you gamers really wanted it. So I hope this was able to suffice. Feel free to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, whether I missed something or I made a mistake, in which, yes, I've made a lot in my last video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye!